In this tutorial for Infobooks IFCM, we're going to look at the various graphing tools that are available within the software. On the screen in front of us, we can see a standard view. We have a network shown in the centre of the view. We have a grid report uh, top right, a long section report centre right, and a single graph shown bottom right. These are some of the classic views that are available in Infobooks ICM. To look at individual reports and individual graphings, we can use a, a series of different tools that are available on the top menu. And the most common tool we can use is the graphing tool, which is a simple one-click graph tool. So we can select the graphing tool, select the object that we wish to graph, let's say this pipe at the uh, top of the network here, and having chosen our pipe, we can see that we are given the choice of attributes that we wish to graph. And in this case, we can choose flow. Having made that choice, you can see we have a graph very quickly up on the screen. Because it's a pipe network, it's only carrying storm water. It um, flows in and out very quickly. We can zoom in on to that particular area of the graph in order to get more detail. We can repeat that function for any device in the network. So we could use our graph tool, we could click on our 2D zone where we have some flow here and look at the depth of uh, water in that particular element. And we can see rising up very quickly to a height of just under 2 meters and then falling back to just over a meter in depth. As well as graphing individual elements, we can graph multiple elements. And we do that with a slightly different tool. And first of all, we need to make a selection. So we can choose, let's say, this river element that we have here, the river reach, and perhaps also the uh, other incoming uh, reach. Um, we can see those two reaches join as a confluence in the center of the screen. Having chosen those two items, we can use this tool, which is graph selected objects, and in this particular case, we uh, are also able to match different parameters and different attributes. In this case, we're just going to look at flow. We could, if we wish, perhaps put depth on, on the axis as well, but we're just going to look at flow for these two particular objects. And we'll choose to look at the flow at the downstream end of these objects, so where they meet at the confluence. And again, very quickly, we can see a standard graph coming up. And we can see the flow patterns in those two reaches heading towards the confluence of the screen. Finally, the other option we have is the ability to produce much more detailed reports. And uh, this is done under the uh, results menu and graph reports. And here we can see we can do a location report. The location report allows us to drop in an individual set of simulation results and then a selection list. And at the moment, you can see that we already have those two reaches selected. So it's saying current, the current selection. However, we've already graphed that, so that's of little value to us. What I am going to do is bring this selection list from the left-hand side of the screen, and we could drag it uh, onto the network, and we can see that this pipe has been selected here, and also right at the bottom of the screen, uh, another pipe down there. We can also carry that selection list right across and into the dialog we have here, and from there immediately produce our graphs. And in this particular case, we're going to look at the downstream flow and also include uh, attribute blocks, statistical data, and grid lines. Press OK, and we can see that graph immediately comes up on the screen, and here is our, again, our flow rates in those two pipes. And again, because the pipes are just carrying stormwater, the flows drop within a six-hour period, and if we wished, we could actually zoom in and look at those graphs in more detail. And as we do zoom in, you'll notice that the statistical reporting at the bottom of the screen changes. We're updating our minimum and our maximum flows and our volumes of water for the view that we're currently looking at. If I zoom back, you'll see that those numbers are then updated so that uh, we have the pan over that full 24 hour period. So that's just a very quick tutorial showing the different graphing options that are available in InfoWorks ICM and the different reports that can be produced depending on the type of network that you're looking at and the type of output that you need to produce.